Almost half of suspects are under the age of 24 and a quarter of victims are female. Our Home Affairs correspondent Sarah Corker reports. Step into the sensationally stylish Blackpool Tower ballroom. In the shadow of its famous tower, Blackpool has some of the most deprived neighbourhoods in Britain. There is a darker side to this seaside town. If someone started on me, I'd stab them. A lot of people bring knives like when we have fights like. These boys are 14 and 15 years old. One told me he'd been stabbed in the leg. He then showed me a picture of himself holding a machete at home. To protect their identities, their voices have been changed. Is it a normal thing for people to carry knives around here? Yeah, pretty much. Why do you think people are carrying knives? Protection. So if someone comes to you with a knife, you pull out a knife as well, then nothing's going to happen. I know people carrying them. People how old? Our age. 14-year-olds so carrying knives. 13 at the least, carrying one. Why would a 13-year-old boy need to carry a knife? Protection. Protection from what, though? From each other. At Blackpool Football Club's Community Trust, students are taught about the dangers of carrying knives. Lauren is 18, Keely 17. Both have been threatened. Me and my mate were walking home, and um, a guy just came out and threatened to stab one of my mates. He had, like, he had a knife pointing to him. Do you feel safe going out? <laughs> no. I got threatened with a machete on a park by a group of lads when I was playing football because they wanted to play in our half, but we said no. Serious knife crime here in Blackpool has almost tripled over the last five years. County lines drug gangs, cuts to youth services, poverty, unemployment, exclusion rates at schools, they've all been linked to a rise in youth violence. She joins us now. Sarah, what happened in court? Well, Joseph McCann was described as a brutal and dangerous man who has shown no remorse for his crimes. For two weeks, he roamed around the country kidnapping and raping women and children. His attacks started in Watford. They continued in London, Lancashire and Greater Manchester. He was finally arrested in May in Cheshire. There was a police chase. McCann was driving a stolen car and he was finally found hiding up a tree by the police helicopter. So the attack started inside Fishmonger's Hall at this prisoner rehabilitation event which was being run by Cambridge University. And Usman Khan, he was invited to that event. He knew many of those who were there and he came armed with knives and a fake suicide vest. He turned on those trying to rehabilitate him. The Office for National Statistics, which published the figures, says fewer people from the EU are coming to work in Britain. Sarah Corker reports. The Fenlands in eastern England, home to some of the nation's most fertile farmland. And this area has long been a destination for migrants looking for work in the fields and factories. Supermarkets and us, the customers, want fresh vegetables all year round. And it's tough physical work. Farmers say they're finding it harder to get the number of people they need to meet the growing demand. We're all competing for those workers. Farmer Nick Allpress relies on EU workers to pick and pack his leeks. 85% of his employees are Eastern European. Straight after six, uh, the Brexit vote in 16, um, we saw a, a, a marked drop. And actually, I think the workers are very unsure whether they're welcome, what, what's their status is going to be, um, even those who are permanent here now. So, um, but, but now we find year on year since then uh, that the availability of uh, capable workers is dropping. Since peak levels in early 2016, EU net migration, that's the numbers arriving minus the numbers leaving, has fallen to an estimated 48,000, the lowest level in 16 years. But in contrast, net migration from elsewhere in the world has gradually risen to over 220,000 as more non-EU citizens came to the UK to study. The Commissioner of the London Fire Brigade, Danny Cotton, has apologised to the families but said she won't resign. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Sarah Corker, reports. Operational failures by the London Fire Brigade. A tower block that didn't comply with building regulations. And 72 lives lost. The 1,000-page report concludes more people would have survived if the building had been evacuated sooner. 
And this morning, Grenfell families held a minute's silence. They want you to please listen to their testimonies. They broadly the welcome the report's criticism. findings, but for many, it was heartbreaking to read. Here my family. Here. Why? Why? The day night I no sleep. Always cry. We don't want to see and want anybody else to go through what we have had to go through and what we're still going through. The report confirmed the fire started due to an electrical fault in a fridge freezer and the flames engulfed the tower block because it was covered in flammable cladding. Yeah, hello, hi, in the fire, it's like 16 great people power. This was the first 999 call of the night. There were hundreds more. Quick, 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 they're on the way. And for nearly two hours, residents were told to stay put. And while firefighters were commended for their extraordinary courage, the report concludes the brigade's planning for a fire like Grenfell was gravely inadequate. Today, the head of the fire service, Danny Cotton, personally apologised. We will never, ever forget the tragedy of that night. The 72 lives lost were just the worst thing ever. And London Fire Brigade are truly sorry we couldn't have saved everyone's life that night. Families hope today's recommendations will help to bring in changes that could save lives. And this inquiry has some way to go yet. Next year it will consider questions on the cladding, building regulations and the role of the council. Police believe that some of those arrested tonight are part of an organised crime gang who have been trafficking vulnerable women to the UK and forcing them to work in the sex trade. There will be plenty of promises to recruit more officers. In fact, forces in England and Wales have already started recruiting 20,000 new officers over the next three years. But that only roughly replaces the numbers that have been cut since 2010. For police numbers to really grow and to replace those who leave or retire every year, forces will actually have to recruit over 40,000 officers by 2023. Hundreds of people work in Facebook's safety and security team and its base here in London. And over the past two years, 26 million posts from global terror groups have been removed. And Facebook uses artificial intelligence to spot extreme content. Youth workers say some women end up carrying weapons for gangs because they are less likely to be stopped by the police. Our correspondent Sarah Corker has our special report. Manchester city centre in the middle of the afternoon and a teenager has been threatening someone with a knife. But look closely and there's a difference here. This is an 18-year-old woman. She was carrying this, a 12-inch bread knife. And across England, female knife possession is rising. The first thing I would go do is run for a knife. I would, I would go for a knife, um, threaten, cut. It was like this mist came over me and I charged at her with the knife and just stabbed her straight in the top of her head. Louise Ann and Teresa both lived in a world fueled by violence and were addicted to drugs. For 12 years, Teresa carried a knife. She went to prison for attacking her neighbour. I stayed in this lifestyle of just brokenness, um, in a very abusive relationship to the point that my kids were taken into the care system and at that point I completely lost all hope. So I started taking heroin, um, I was out on the streets working in prostitution and I used to get in a lot of fights, there was a lot of violence. I'd either have a knife or a pair of scissors, something sharp. Women are often overlooked or ignored when it comes to tackling Britain's problem with knife crime. It's framed as a male problem. But figures obtained by the BBC show that on average, one woman is caught carrying a knife here in the north of England every single day. In England, there's been a 73% increase in knife possession cases involving women in the last five years. Since 2014, there's been more than 5,800 cases of women caught carrying knives. 
around a quarter of those involved girls under the age of 18.